My favourite Dan Grieve short game move. Slightly better. And we're dropping it on the pin. And stopping really quick. Did you see that grip? Oh, that little grab into the green was lovely. So there's a lot of hype at the minute about Dan Grieve and his short game wizardry. He's recently done a full length video with the likes of Rick Shields, helping him with his short game and helping him to get better contact in the ground and more shots on target. I haven't had a lesson with Dan Grieve. I haven't yet read Dan Grieve's book, but I hear it's wonderful. But I've gone through his Instagram with a fine tooth comb and I'm gonna go through my favorite parts of it that have helped me massively on the golf course. When we're looking at making swing changes in the main swing, we we might make some changes and we'll evolve our golf swing and we'll improve as we go along, but we'll mold our golf swing into something that we do the same quite often. But the short game for me is more like strings to a bow, having different options that give you different flights and different results based on the shot that you need at any given time. Now the two main shots that I use on the golf course, the first one is where I have the ball slightly back in the stance, have a shorter backswing and I have it short and I drive the club through the ball. It's quite an aggressive way of hitting the ball and it only really works on certain turf conditions if that ground gets quite soft it doesn't work so right here I've got a 50 yard shot and I'd be looking to have a shorter backswing here like parallel with my belt so I'd go back to here and I'd drive the club through the ground and hit something there or thereabouts in terms of yardage but the ball just runs and it doesn't stop very quick and sometimes I catch it just right and it really digs its heels in so the results can vary the second one I've got is where I get really close to the goal Golf ball and I get the club really upright and I treat it like a really big fat putt. Now this really helps in the rough and it really helps with quite a consistent result relative to different ground conditions. But it is a bit of a one trick pony. I get upright, my grip changes so I can get the club more upright. I go here, I treat it like a big putt. I get something that's fairly consistent, but it's always gonna land, it's always gonna release up there. I know that shot fairly well because I do play it quite a lot, which is absolutely fine when nothing is in the way and maybe it's quite flat ground in the run up to the hole. If I need to get the ball higher and stop it quicker, I basically do the first shot with more loft and an open face. But again, it's got limitations in terms of ground conditions. So the first shot that I had where I go shorter here really does require a lot of forward lean, forward press, drive through the ground. And when I've dissected the Dan Grieve Instagram, I found something absolutely delightful. So the main concepts that I've taken from all of the stuff that I've seen so far is that this grip stays where it is, the top of the grip stays still, and the club works around the top of that grip. So I'm really working the club to like pendulum back and through and strike the same point on the ground much more consistently. And with that move, we're not really taking any big chunky hard divots. We really are like sweeping that club along the turf and getting a much sweeter, cleaner contact. And I do find that I can hit the ground a little bit early and if I hit the ground early, the ball still pops up and it still does something quite nice, which is one of the benefits of this upright technique. I can fat it and it still goes quite nicely, but it's a low spinning, low launching, running shot. Now the first time I started trying this, I had quite hard hands and I almost forced the club to work here. So I'm really hinging the hands and pointing it at my zip still. And then the other factor is that I'm hinging my hands and I'm trying to get the face to aim up into the sky. I don't want anything that way. So I've caught the ball a little bit heavy, it's popped up high and it's landed a bit short because I've not hit it hard enough. So if I now soften my hands, soften my grip and just get a bit lighter and it'll just get a little bit easier with the club, bring the club back, let go of it, let the club come through. I get a bit less rigid and a lot more free. Again, caught the ground a little bit heavy, popped up, a bit closer to the green. And if I now start using some of the mechanisms that Dan Grieve has, if I start letting that get loose, if I start just opening the body a little bit, if I get stuck at the ball, the club can get a bit hard. If I move my body, that strike levels out a bit more. So I'm feeling grip to zip. I don't really wanna feel like this grip moves too far away from my zip. And I'm just letting my body open up. Slightly better. And we're dropping it on the pin. And stopping really quick. 
Did you see that grip? Oh, that little grab into the green was lovely. And it's exciting for me because I've never had that grip without it coming in really low and hard. I've had it where it skids and then grabs, maybe. But it's nice to have that little mechanism where I've even caught it a little bit heavy and it's still just gripping in. Soft hands, turn a little bit. There we go, going up nice and soft and grabbing. Now I'm doing this with a 52 degree wedge and normally to get that amount of control, I really would have to use a 60 and drive it hard. You really wanna try it with less loft. So you have to then add that loft through the ball just to get it to pop up and land nice and soft. Nah, I didn't get that one. Still needs a bit of work, but even though I've drop kicked it, I'm absolutely fine. For me now, the next stages for me are to get this motion working with a bit more freedom and a bit more fluidity without too much rigid angles moving. Oh, crisp, lovely crisp shot, drop and stop. Oh, oh, I love it. And because of these moves, I absolutely can't wait to get on the golf course. But the lesson schedule and the workshop are getting quite busy because it's coming into the summer and everybody wants their clubs fixed and, and everyone wants their swing sorted. But I will get out as and when I can because all I want to do is miss greens and hit chips. Nah, driven. Hard hands, naughty. But I've got half of it, it's all right. I could literally do this all day long and never get bored of it. Nice. And drop and stop. Didn't quite grip in, but it's all right. See, one of the elements of my previous technique is getting that handle forward, like shorter swing, forcing the club through. If I do that and force the club through, if I do that and force the club through, I'm changing where the grip comes through in terms of placement to the low point. So my strike is varying because I'm varying how much I drive that grip forward. Now, when I get from this point here and I get more of a pendulum mechanism where this doesn't move as much, my strike gets a bit more uniform and it gets a bit more samey-samey, which is is lovely. Oh, I'm still driving. Lean and drive. Work to do to perfect it, but it is a breath of fresh air for me because I haven't had this approach on the golf course where I just can't wait to do something. Now, Dan is about 10 minutes down the road from me and I can't believe I haven't actually gone to see him, but I will have to get booked in for a lesson with him or a group session, not really for anything but my own curiosity. Oh, that was nice. Really trying to whip my hands through. Oh, here he is. Add the pin. Smash the like button, give a little subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Slightly better, and we're dropping it on the pin. And stopping really quick. Did you see that grip? Oh, that little grab into the green was lovely.